Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the American Pen Company Minimalist 400 IB in gunmetal coloration. Um, so uh, first off, I want to thank very, very much my buddy Chuck for sending this little guy along. He donated this to the channel. That's it's very generous of you, Chuck, and I appreciate it very much. Um, so uh, that's good. Um, next thing, uh, the size. Let's do a size comparison for you real quick. Against, come on now, get on there. There we go. Uh, here it is against a uh, Pilot G2 uh, pen. So you can see this is a, a reasonably full-size pen. Here it is against a Bic, uh, Bic Click Stick sort of thing. And uh, here it is against your Prometheus Alpha pen, uh, which is one of my very favorite everyday carry sorts of pens. So um, there's your size comparison. And finally, um, this is American Pen Company, APC. Um, not a company I've heard much about previously, but um, very interesting to check out here. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular uh, writing utensil here. So first off, on the good side, um, they, they've made a couple of smart little choices here. Um, this pen's claim to fame, actually, um, to start with, is that it is a uh, refillable uh, ink pen, rollerball sort of thing. This is using just a generic uh, fountain pen cartridge, using the international cartridge standard, and it uses a uh, rollerball sort of ballpoint sort of pen. I'm not entirely sure whether this qualifies as a rollerball or a ballpoint point or whatever. They just call it a ball tip, I think. But uh, whatever it is, I mean, it writes fine. And in fact, it writes wet. Um, but that's actually a nice thing to me. Um, I, I feel like this is a very nice writer. And it is, because it does have the ball there, it does actually apply uh, pressure as you're writing with it, uh, which is very nice for if you're doing things like carbon paper or something like that, where a conventional fountain pen isn't going to work super well. And so that's probably one of the best things about it is that it does use a rollerball tip here, which can be convenient at times when a fountain pen is absolutely not. Oy, oy, oy. We'll get there. Um, but anyways, so that's, that's a nice little choice there. And that's kind of its claim to fame. Next thing, um, this is, uh, you can see it's got these two little balls on the top there. And uh, the idea behind those is that these are anti-roll balls. Basically, because this pen is entirely just a, a cylinder, having these two little balls actually does stop it from rolling away as it's in use, which is a beautiful thing. It's something I appreciate very much, and uh, it's a nice little design touch that makes things a little bit better. So that's good. Um, it is a very durable pen, which I appreciate very much. Um, when you throw the cap on here, you can throw this guy in your, your pocket, in your purse, whatever, and it's going to be A-OK, -okay, no problem like that. Um, it does write nicely, as I was just saying. It's a, ni it, it's a nice wet writer, which is good. Um, and, you know, you can color very nicely. There, there are no problems with ink dropout. You can do all sorts of things. Like, I mean, it, it's a nice writer. And uh, then finally, on the good side, um, it has some nice knurling here. You can see right up top here, this little knurling for removing the cap. It's nicely done. So um, to me, at least that's what's good here is that uh, it has the nice knurling up here. It writes pretty nicely. All things considered, it is a durable pen. I mean, you can just toss it in a pack or a purse or something like that, and it's going to be a freaking okay. Um, it is a rollerball, which is going to be good for pen. Uh, for, it's going to be good for pen. There you go. You heard it here first. No, it's going to be good for uh, pressure requiring uh, forms, carbon paper, things like that. And uh, it is uh, it has the anti roll balls, which is always something you know that's it's nice. It keeps it from running away from you. Um, on the great side for me is actually the basic concept here, which is that it is a ballpoint sort of pen which uses conventional refills. Um, and this is a beautiful thing to me because, uh, well, it's using any refill you'd like. There is no shortage of refills in the world for fountain pens. Um, and so you can buy them pre-made, or you could probably even use a cartridge converter with this guy. Um, and that means you can use pretty much any ink color you'd like. You can use ink in bulk. It's very non-wasteful. Usually with, uh, you know, pen cartridges, you throw away a good portion of the pen every time you change it out. Whereas with this guy, you can use whatever color you'd like. And so, to me at least, that is absolutely a great idea. To have a ballpoint pen that you can refill using any kind of fountain pen ink, well, that's just a beautiful thing. So, um, to me at least, that's what's great, is the refillability. On the bad side, first off, the cap on this guy, unfortunately, just kind of rolls away. There is no way to post this. It doesn't sit up here. There's no magnetic sort of thing. Um, it, all you can do is set the cap down someplace. And what that means is you're probably going to lose the cap before too long there. Um, that's something I don't particularly appreciate, uh, and I wish they'd done a little better on that. Next thing, there is no clip uh, on this pen, and there's no clip available for this pen. Given that they have these little balls here, I, I, I thought for sure that they would offer some sort of like a clip that slips onto there and engages with them, and as a result is super secure, but no, they didn't do that. So there is just no clip 
available for this guy. If you want a clipped pen, this is off the freaking menu, um, which is not great. Um, the pen itself is, at some level, not super ergonomic, because I find myself wanting to write with my fingers relatively close to the tip there, and then there's this 90-degree little angle drop here, so it's like you've fallen off the tip of the pen there, um, which is not super incredible. And then finally, um, this is a little detail, but it's a little detail that annoys me on a regular basis. So you put a little bit of torque on this guy here uh, when you're putting the cap on there. Um, the, because the cap and the body are both threaded in the same way, very often when you try and remove the cap by gripping the back of the pen and twisting, you end up uh, unscrewing the back of the pen rather than this portion, which is what you actually want to unscrew. And so this is uh, way more common than I'd like it to be. And this is, by the way, why most pens um, tend to have the, uh, the, the back portion attach where you kind of open the pen up. That attaches underneath the cap. So that way that's just never a concern. But it's a little detail that is regularly annoying. You try and take the pen, take the cap off, but instead you're unscrewing your pen. And so, to me at least, that's what's bad here, is that the cap and body are threaded in the same direction, and so it's very easy to accidentally unscrew that. It's not a super ergonomic pen, particularly up here at the tip. Um, it does not have a clip, which seems like a big oversight to me. Uh, and then uh, the cap on this guy just does not post at all. The ugly front, well, a couple of things here. To start with, take a look at this. This is the logo here. Look at the centering of this logo, or the, actually, let's put it differently. Look at the complete and total lack of centering on this logo. That's freaking ridiculous. Um, come on, guys. You have to try a little harder than that on a pen that is, next ugly piece, $109. This is a lot of money for a pen that's got some substantial issues, but at that kind of a price point, no. You have to do better. You have to show me you give a damn. This kind of thing shows me they're not giving a damn, but the biggest thing that shows me that this pen is not giving a damn is the fact that it is leaking during this review. If we take a look here, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Right there, that's a little bead of black ink coming out from under that. And in fact, today as I was writing this freaking review, you can see that it dripped out onto my page and sprayed everywhere. That's ugly. I'm sorry, but no. I love the idea of this, but you are not allowed to make a pen where the ink just comes dripping out in dollops as you're using it. I kind of suspect that's related to the fact that the pen was cold and then my hand warmed it up, then thermal expansion pressed some of the ink out of there, but no. That is just so deeply not okay okay that no so to me at least that's deeply ugly is that it's it, it's a leaky pen that leaks black or whatever the heck color fancy ink you've got out of there onto whatever you're writing on as you're writing on it as if that's not bad enough it's 109 bucks with really crappy centering that they should have done better on so um th those are the ugly things to me and let's just go into the final verdict um which is honestly that this is a great idea i love very much the idea of a ball based pen that is also using refills which just makes it super freaking easy to use whatever ink color you'd like i this is a great idea 100% and we need a good ball point to roll a ball which takes fountain pen inks i oh man do i love this but unfortunately Unfortunately, we don't have it yet. This is not a good ballpoint pen that takes fountain pen inks um, because it leaks freaking everywhere and it's lazy and it's a hundred bucks. So I just, I don't see that at all. And my kind of final conclusion off of this is just kind of a feeling like, oh, damn it, come on, guys. Because no, that's just, that's not acceptable. And so although I love the idea of this pen very much and I still very much appreciate the generosity of my viewers sending this guy along, my ultimate verdict is just don't bother because they haven't done this right, and so they've turned what could be a really awesome idea into something that's really disappointing. So, um, that's, that's your conclusion. Just don't bother. Anyways, hope this is interesting. Oh, oh, do this right, and it'll be great. Um, but mostly, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. I hope you, uh, feel I made the right call here, and that... Yeah, the, the, this, the negativity in the review doesn't leak into the rest of your day. That was bad. Bye now.